We got the legend killer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Randy Orton. Dude, yeah. I knew what the RKO was before I knew about you. The memes. Somebody started doing those things, and whoever it is, thank you so much. Elon Musk. Elon, it, was it was Elon. Elon. Yeah. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> On your Wikipedia, you're widely regarded as one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. What does that mean to you? That you read that off Wikipedia <laughs> and it doesn't Stupid. mean anything? Do you think at some point in your career you were a, a dick? Yes. <laughs> My dad gave your kids prime at a show. No way. Yeah, yeah. No he's, way. He's, he said he was. He said he was your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's your dad yeah, or not. Yo, yo, that could have been anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very that true. Could have been anybody. Where yeah. was it? Where was the show? Uh, well, it was a show you were at. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, of course. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it was somebody related to you. Maybe. Yo, whose idea of a sick joke is this headphone setup? Is My it, head's gonna snap. Are off. we rolling? We are rolling. It's right. like I got RKO. Left and a right. Is there, does it matter? <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Oh, okay, I can, let me, I can give you a little more slack for it. Uh, if you have dyslexia, wear them backwards. <laughs> and then it'll actually forget it. I like the beginning of the shows. Yeah, they feel chill, relaxed. Dude, look at this. Bro, look at this. What kind of structural design idiot <laughs> created yeah. this? A non flexible. Come on. Bro, look bro. at this. Bro. These are hard working, impulsive employees. Oh, 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 it was you? Oh, my, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no, my bad, dude. It's just, it's choking me, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever he wants to talk about. Oh, he's good. We got no prime energy. Oh, God, dude. Look I, was, I was forced to drink. Oh, oh, We're falling apart. It's like a fucking earthquake. <laughs> it's just crazy. Oh, man. I, I just, I just, I just got off the jet. I'm a sh Sounds you off. You gotta be shit. It sounds off. Man. This is why we're this is why we're not the number one podcast yeah. in the world, bro. We used to be. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm out. I'm out, dude. I'm out. No, nah, I'm out, dude. I can't do this show, Def. <laughs> Whose idea was that, bro? What kind of prank shit? Hold up, hold up. Let me, oh. let me, Randy, before you put those on, let me just make sure we're not gonna get our eardrums blown out. Holy shit, bro. Yeah, can, can you turn down his a little bit? <laughs> you, got, you gotta protect those ears. That's Randy Orton. Oh, they're fucking gone. Years of the crowd just cheering and so loud. I'm so scared right now to put Maybe these back even, on. Uh, yeah, right there, right there. Okay. <laughs> We're rolling all this. I don't care. Yeah, I, fucking I, do it. I don't care. Look, I just got off the jet. Uh, we came here. We're in Brooklyn, which is... Uh, it's great. Yeah. A great township. <laughs> my shoes aren't even tied. I changed my pants in the elevator to come see Randy Orton. We got a legend. Actually, no, 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 no. We got the legend killer on the show today. He's the Viper. He was the youngest champion in WWE history. I am honored to have you on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Randy Orton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Of course, yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, Thanks you, for having me on. You are uh, massive. You are a massive human. <laughs> that's, that's funny you say that, considering all the guys you've met in the back. There's some big boys back there. It is cool walking around the backstage of WWE and seeing all these people that are like actual legitimate giants. like country giants. characters, yeah. giants, like giants. yeah, in real life. Well, have have you met Omos? Yeah. Oh yeah. Biggest guy I've ever seen in my and life. And one I, of the nicest the, guys yeah. in and, the world. And and isn't that a nice like duo? Yeah. Like he could rip you limb from limb, but he's the nicest guy. In do the you world. do you think that uh, I was thinking about this the other day? I was in an elevator and it, I'm six three, so you know it happens to me a little bit rarely you're a big boy yeah but somebody yeah. came in and they were like six six right and i automatically felt a little bit like emasculated oh sure. by that do sure. you think do you think height is a a major driver of male confidence i mean so being tall myself like i'm glad i'm tall yeah you know what i mean i i think the answer would be yes uh, napoleon sure. would say otherwise. <laughs> yeah yeah he would wouldn't he but i i think omas is walking around just about as confident as confident to be but he, he's uh he's taking pictures with my kids um and i mean the, the having a six-year-old stand next to a seven foot four 400 pound man that's quite a, a discrepancy there it's an awesome picture yeah. you yeah. you you would think that height often equates to confidence but actually, the one thing that I was watching on the plane ride here was the uh, the evolution of a predator. Your your documentary that came out like ten years ago. Okay. And uh, I was surprised to hear that you weren't that confident of a kid. Even at even at nineteen years old, you, you said you were working in a gas station, the night shift at a gas station. Sure. I, I just can't see that. Yeah. No. I 
even now I think I have, uh, you know, I don't think, I, you know, when I walk through the curtain, there's a certain part of me that, that changes and switches. And I've, I've had thousands and thousands of matches and I've gotten to over time just kind of hone, I guess, the skill of, of being able to turn into that character. You know, when I go into the ring, you're, just, step through the you're just turning it on. Yeah, I'm not like walking around every day. You know, I, I think I had a chip on my shoulder when I was in my 20s and I thought my shit didn't stink. And, you know, I might that, that confidence was just like armor. It, you know, um, I, I think, you know, I get just as nervous before I go out there as anybody. You know? I, I heard you say you get more nervous doing media. At least in the past. In the past, well, that doc, uh, that doc was ten years old. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> lives changed. Like I, I've, I, oh my God, so much. That's a that's a lifetime ago. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But yeah. still, it's it's fascinating to me because as someone who's very new to this, sure. I'm watching where you were and are and how you began and like drawing the comparisons. Of and of course, you've you've personally reached out to me even yeah, um during yeah. my wwe wwe run thus far and i really appreciated it just giving me advice and yeah man you're doing some crazy stuff out there but like uh i, I mean everybody i'm sure that you've had on that's in our business tells you how amazing you're doing i don't i don't need to be gassed up but i i know you don't and i'm not gonna <laughs> but like uh like i i gotta point out um like the little things that you're doing at this point already, the ability, and I think it was in Saudi Arabia, is that where you work, Ray? Yeah, uh, no, 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 uh, recently? Uh, recently, yeah. Yeah, with Ray, yeah. Okay, so um, he did a he did a spot with you. Hold up, I'm sorry. Yeah. Give me, can he, I get my fucking championship belt? My oh, bad. Yeah, I forgot that my you were bad. even the US champ. I did. Yo, Very important. To my bad. Thing. Cause you haven't talked about it or shown it on yeah. any pictures in a long time. When I beat Ray Fair and Square in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why. So, anyways, continue complimenting me. You you caught him. You caught him out of midair when some, you were a little farther back. He came up a little short on like a springboard moonsault or something. Yep. But you got under him. Yep. And and you saved him. You saved the spot and, and the way you got down on your hips, the hip mobility and the strength and the way you got up with him. And he's not the biggest cat, but the predicament you were in and the way you got out of it <laughs> was amazing. A lot of guys, you know, wouldn't have been there for that. I've seen guys, I'm not gonna name any names, but I've seen guys that have, you know, completely missed guys or dropped guys in a situation like that. So mm -hmm. the fact that you knew what to do and in a tenth, a hundredth of a second you were there, mm -hmm. that's impressive. That's all the gassing up, gassing you up. Thanks, yeah, <laughs> thanks, yeah. Man. thanks. I was, man. I was going to ask you if that deviates at all from what your feelings were before you had seen him perform, because you guys have had a number of uh, celebs and entertainers come into the league over the years. For sure, social media influencers. For sure, for know? sure. And and obviously not the case anymore. But when he was first coming in, he was <clears throat> at the time listed as a, a losing boxer. Uh, has been state wrestler, considered by many to be controversial. Did you make a list? Doesn't talk to his mom enough, poor diet. <laughs> a Washington Post article even listed him as the smallest penis in the influencer space. They the list not goes say on. That. Oh, amazing. Yep. How would they know that? I don't know. What was your initial take on him prior? I, I prior didn't, to I didn't know a lot about the Paul brothers, specifically Logan, um, other than what, so I've got five children, mm -hmm. and um, my kids, you know, oh, Logan this, Logan that, Jake this, Jake that. So I had always heard his name in my household, but I wasn't too familiar. Um, when you came backstage, I think the first time we we met, you looked me in the eye. I, I could tell right away that you wanted to be there. I could tell right away, and I know I'm sure a lot of guys have talked about respect in our business. I could tell like, okay, like, I saw who Logan Paul was in that mm. split second, and I was like, all right, he's good back here. I could just tell. I could just tell by the way you shook my hand, man, mm. you know, mm. that you were good to go. And then, of course, like as we were saying, just got, you're getting better and better, and that's the way to go. Trying, man, trying to learn yeah. from the greats. I mean, you, you, your career has been amazing, and I, I look to all the superstars in the WWE, and I, I, I try to take what I can. And the one thing that I notice about you, and I think a lot of the fans – know it and see it and resonate it with it resonate with it and love it is like they can feel your passion i i think maybe a little more than everyone else when you're out there you can feel that shift like even even some of the things you do you're going viral right now for for that ddt where you were like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> where does that come from what is that i don't know man um so it's like that 
that fire inside of you and I just I just let it out. I uh it's it's hard to explain. It's kind of so a lot of guys and, and oh gosh, it, it's weird talking about putting matches together. Um, back in the day, we would never be sitting here talking to each other, talking about how we put shit together. Mm. But um, when you have so many things you're thinking about ahead of time, like all those things with Ray, you had them burned in. For sure. It's hard to kind of be in the moment. If you go out there, if you and me went out there and we had nothing laid out except for kind of, you know, a beginning, a middle, in an end, there'd be a lot of gaps to fill. There'd be plenty of time to be in the moment. For me, not having all these spots, if you will, to remember, um, and 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 it, it gives you the ability to be in the moment and be out there and actually listen to the people. Mm -hmm. What we do is is kind of, you know, get a temperature for the crowd, and we can adjust on the fly. We can pivot when we want. When you have everything laid out, well, it's a choreographed dancing with the stars. You know, I know where I'm going to be at this point in the match, and oh, he's got to duck this, duck that. Here we go over the top, through the table, da da da. You have the whole match laid out. You're probably sleeping the night before, dreaming about those spots. You'll get to a level eventually where you can go out there with some guys, and you can show up an hour before the show, talk very limitedly, and then go out there, and then those people are gonna get something else. They're not gonna get maybe the athleticism from a Randy Orton that they would from a Logan Paul, but what I can bring to the table is that emotion. And what a lot of guys, when you say that it's a little different with me than other guys, it's because I think most of those other guys are just thinking about what's next. So that's the difference. That is the expert level in professional wrestling. And, and I learned that coming in when I did. When I was 19, I signed with the WWE. So I'm, I'm like the only guy that's never left and come back. Well, I, other than John Cena. Um, but like, I'm, you know, I'm going to be here for the rest. You know, th this, is, this is me. Like, I'm not moving on to Hollywood. I love what I do. I, I just had 18 months off recovering from a spinal fusion. So... I was kind of faced with the fact that I might not be able to do this again. So it's it's almost like I got a second lease on on my career here and I'm I'm not going to take a day for granted. Not not a second in that ring for granted. And and so now even now more so than you know the matches you would have seen like a year ago when you first started or a couple of years ago when you first started like I'm feeling even more in my element now. I mean you're looking at it too Randy. I got I got to say the fans are going crazy on Twitter. <laughs> you're tan, you're yoked. You look, you look probably the best you ever have, arguably. Yeah, I, uh, so I changed a lot of stuff off this last 18 months. I, I really needed the time. I had a lot of you know, ailments. Um, of course, I mean, I couldn't stand for more than a couple of minutes without having pain shoot down my legs. Um, when I would sit, I had a disc that was slipping every time I, I would bend. So, you know, on a plane sitting here, my feet would go numb and I'd have pain shooting down my legs. Oh, it, it, it really sucked. It really was hard. Um, that last year before um, I had to leave because of the back, I was in a tag team with uh, former WWE superstar Matt Riddle. And I got to give him props because that year we tagged together, I, I, I was not able to be in that ring unless I was in there with someone like him because he was able to take the brunt of the physicality. He tagged me at the end. I'd come in, do, ah, you know, I'd do my shit. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made it that far. But I had some great doctors. They fixed me up right. They didn't cut through any muscle, which would enable me to get back in the ring. Because um, once you start cutting muscle, like that's never gonna heal back. Like it's, it's you're done. So I got, I'm just blessed all the way around. And uh, blessed to have learned, like the little tidbit of uh, knowledge I gave from you, I learned that from guys like Triple H, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker. Um, and, and I'm so lucky to have gotten into the business when I did. Hey, as you guys know, I'm engaged now. Look Congrats. at that. Hey, thanks, man. And with the holidays around the corner, every gift has to be that much more special when you're shopping for holiday gifts for a loved one. Don't you want your gift to feel lasting and special, not something she'll have stopped using by next year? Yes. Any holiday season can come become an unforgettable celebration with a jewelry gift from Blue Nile. As the original online jeweler, 
Blue Nile has some of the highest quality standards in the industry. They have thousands of diamonds that are independently graded and ethically sourced. And Blue Nile's fine jewelry is priced well below traditional retail. Plus, their gift shopping experience is first class with non-commissioned jewelry experts on hand 24-7 via phone or chat to help you find exactly what you're looking for. No one wants to be driving around town looking for a last minute gift to find the store is closed or the item you want gone. So Blue Nile offers peace of mind with each purpose with a diamond price match guarantee and 30-day returns. And your gift won't just stun when she unwraps it. It'll sparkle for years to come. BlueNile.com to save up to 50% on stunning jewelry gifts already priced below traditional retail. That's up to 50% site-wide at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. Back to Randy Orton. Bet that'll make her want to let you stuff her stocking. Back to Randy Orton. Yeah, you told me uh, you're only as good as your last match. And, yeah. And, and you, yeah. you don't need to go off to the top ropes and that that was the uh, dm the right DM yeah, yeah 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 you're, you're leaving it all out there in the ring man and you've got so much going on for you you, you know there's there's always another one there's always another one it's so funny though because this is hilarious when you when you said that to me and even now like i'm taking the advice i hear you but you know i still want to Oh, you're like, you fuck jump that. off the highest I'm, I'm, thing I can find. I'm going to leave it all out there. I, I I know you are. And then in this documentary that I watched from 13 years ago, I heard you say the same thing yeah. when Arn Anderson was like, buddy, you don't got to go as hard as you, you're going. This is like longevity game. Right. Well, <laughs> well, and that's kind of my my big thing is how long can I do it? Mm. I'm, I'm already the longest tenured WWE superstar in history. Um, and, and it sounds weird because I'm 43, but I just got started early. Um, not that I'm a spring chicken or anything now, but, but I, I still feel like I got a lot of gas in the tank. Um, longevity is everything for me. Uh, I, I started, I was one of the first guys to start um, traveling by bus. Like, you know, guys rent cars, jump in a car four deep, and they're driving 300 miles a night. You can't, your body can't recover. The longer, you know, the more bumps you take, the more time you need to recover, the more you have to, you know, look at those things. So when I'm home, there's, I got a team at home and I'm, I'm able to get everything I need to get done so that I can recover and be ready for that next show. I've, on your Wikipedia, you talk about this career spanning 20 years. <clears throat> You're widely regarded as one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. That's a, that's a, a well, burden and a pressure. What does that, what does that mean to you? that you read that off Wikipedia. <laughs> I was like, why did you cite your source? And it doesn't Stupid. mean anything. Stupid. <laughs> Anyone could have it's, wrote it's, that. Uh, it's, <laughs> it was in quotes. It has to mean something. It's, uh, so, well, but oh, this, so it's but, true. But your response to that, you it's, know, is, is uh, pretty obvious as to how you, how you yeah. feel about it. You know? I, so like, <laughs> I've got my favorites. Everyone's got they? their favorite. Well, so what I was gonna say is everyone's got their favorites. I have no doubt. There is a healthy amount of people out there that consider to me, to, for me to be one of the best, but then there's a lot of guys out there that I'm not in their Mount Rushmore. Well, let's look know? at the scoreboard. You've got 14 belts, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. W w world titles, sure. Too, too, too short of the of the record for, for most belts. Is, it, is that what of it all is? time, I is think it, it's 16. Is, is that, that Flair or it, Cena? Uh, there, there's a tie. That's a tie. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I might be tied with Hunter then at 14 too. Do I think he has 14 world titles? Does that? Uh, would you? Would you like to hold that record? Is it possible oh, at this point in your career? I want to do everything I can, man. You know, longevity is always the number one goal for me, and and being able to go home, play with my kids, and not be in pain. Right. That that'd be the ultimate goal. But, you know, as many accomplishments as I can accomplish in this. You know, in, in WWE, that I just the more the better. I, I've already done so much so uh, so far. It's kind of nice being in a position where I can watch other guys' matches and maybe critique and help and answer questions. And and so for the first time in my career, I find myself being a little bit of a, gosh, I don't even want to say the word. Um, you know, I guess a mentor to some people. Yeah, you know, like like I can I can I can pull a guy aside, kind of like I DM'd you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, hey man, careful. You know, don't go out there and end up in a wheelchair. You got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it'd be you would you know be doing a lot of podcasts only. Podcasts only, exactly. <laughs> like like you just you always got to be thinking of that next one. Well, I can tell you, I appreciate the advice and like that that knowledge only comes from people who have have done it and done it at the highest level. Um, the way that you have developed since you started is also highly interesting. It's it's really cool to hear that this passion sort of like developed for, for wrestling, especially because you're a third generation wrestler. I don't know if you know this. Grandfather wrestled, father wrestled, 
massive wrestlers and very successful in their career, except you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have that, that feeling to want to go do it, even though it was, you know, in, in the lineage. And then all of a sudden, what changed that, that, that made you want to do this, you know, forever and, and be Randy Orton? Yeah. Growing up in the business, I was always around it and I wasn't necessarily a fan until I was, you know, uh, later on in high school. And then, you know, I started watching pay-per-views, but I never, like in, uh, in 98, 97, 98, you know, I was a junior and senior in high school and I'd watch, I, this is when Goldberg was doing his thing and the undefeated streak. Yeah. And I mean, I'd get with my buddies and I'd watch Goldberg, Jackhammer, mm. you know, a guy through the ring, oh my God, Goldberg. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm 18 years old. Little did I know four years later, I'd be wrestling the guy. Insane. 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 Like, Insane. like, I can't, I still, <laughs> it blows my mind. Uh, but, but, but I never saw myself doing it. My buddies would ask me and, you know, back to that confidence, I never, ever thought that I could do what my dad did. Never. I gotta ask the why, man. You're six foot, like, what, four, two, thirty? It, like, it, it seems like everything's mindset, there. Man. The puzzle's there. It, it, it was all up here. You know, physically, I felt like as far as an athlete, I came into my own, you know, after I started training for wrestling. You know, I'd played sports, you know, my whole life, but I never really excelled in any one thing. I, I amateur wrestled from the fourth grade up through high school, but then I dropped it to play basketball. I should have stuck with it. Yeah, but you went to state twice. I, I did. I did. Yeah, I, 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 I had a successful amateur wrestling career in high school but like uh you know as far as some of these guys i mean i'm kurt angle olympic gold medalist brock lesnar Bro like, oh, yeah. jesus brock you know and yeah. the list goes on yeah. shelton benjamin all these guys they come from you know athletic i can never dream of being the athlete that they were so especially back then like if anyone knew that i couldn't do it it was me you know and and i think what happened is i gave the military a, a shot and that didn't go too well. And <laughs> then talk about that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then, uh, and then the uh, you know working midnights at the gas station that wasn't really I wasn't really you know that wasn't as much fun as I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> I no so way. I was no it, it, legitimate, legitimate. I'm 19 and I'm like, hey, Dad, what do you think? Yeah. Could but, you give somebody a call? Could I give this wrestling thing? And he's like, oh, son, I. Our name's been blackballed from this business. From, I'm like, what? And I guess, you know, he used to get in a little bit of a tr uh, trouble. My uncle wrestled as well. Uh, rest in peace, Uncle Barry. But, but um, you know, so he didn't think I, they were going to welcome me with open arms or anything. And it was the opposite, in fact. They were like, oh, my God, Bob, you got a son? Jesus. And my father still is highly regarded as one of the best back in his generation so for him to have a kid and and at the time i believe the only other generational guy was the rock really that was making any waves as a third generation superstar so you know here's another third generation superstar bruce pritchard vince mcmahon all those guys they looked at that and were like okay let's start training this guy see what we can get and that's where the confidence started to grow. I mean, the people you were training with are among, like, literally the the, the best that yeah. the, the business has ever oh, had. Man. John Cena, blessed. Batista. I was so blessed to be down there with guys like that. Uh, Batista, Shelton Benjamin was down there. Um, uh, gosh, was, was Lesnar there at one point? Oh, Lesnar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember the day he came. We were all like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Who the, what yeah. is? It? What is yeah, that?" Yeah, yeah. I remember. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> he, so we're all we're, we're all talking shit, you know, under our breath, and 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 here he comes. And and back then there wasn't all you know. We had one ring in a shitty warehouse, and there was like twelve of us. So here comes Lesnar. We knew he was coming. We get in practice. We start doing the rope running drills where you just you know yep. you, you just burn. You just go. And um, he didn't hook the top rope, as I'm sure you've been told, make sure you get the arm over that top rope, otherwise you're gonna end up in the bleachers. Yeah. And sure enough, that motherfucker, um, he leapt out of the ring between the second and third rope and took out like 20 metal chairs. And then just popped up, dusted himself off, and was like, hoo, hoo. I bet y'all would like to see that again. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, we were like, uh, it's cool, <laughs> you know. <laughs> do your thing, you know. But uh, but like, yeah, I was down there with some amazing athletes, and I learned so much. Do you think that talent exists today? Like, where where are the people that look like you and John Cena, and Batista and Brock Lesnar? 
We got Austin Theory. He's pretty ripped. What is it, just but, a size thing that you're talking I don't about? No, I don't Look know, at just, the athleticism just, yeah, right now, yeah, bro. No, I no. think the athleticism is true. But. Well, I think there's a lot of guys that get it. Um, there's a lot of guys that get it. I, I almost don't want to start naming names because then I'll, I'll feel bad. I'll leave out, you mm -hmm. know, a lot mm -hmm. of guys. And, and, and I, the list is too long as far as, like, guys we got now that could be great one day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it's amazing, man. You, like... If you look back at Stone Cold Steve Austin when he was stunning Steve before he became Stone Cold Steve Austin, as you know, you know he looked a little different. Yeah, he, he moved a little different. He had long blonde hair. Yeah. He wasn't the same Stone Cold Steve Austin. You never know, man. We got a lot of gems in the back, and it's just going to take you know the right amount of pressure to turn him into a diamond, man. That's one of the coolest things about this business is the ability to evolve oh, yeah. and 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 have these arcs. Um, even recently with with Dominic Mysterio, oh my God. I'm so proud of him because I did my first WrestleMania against him and Ray. Right, and I remember thinking like, how is this kid gonna get out of his dad's shadow? Like nothing about him, as far as I can tell, right now is is like super wow factor. And then he just grew out that mullet and became the most hated person in the W. I, that, I think dude, the longer man. the mullet is directly I, correlated to the heat. I think it's all because of the mullet. <laughs> I really do. 100%. No, he, uh, so his dad and I are, are tight. And uh, you've worked with Ray, you met Ray. Ray's, you know, he's probably the only guy back there that's friendlier than Omas, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, just, Ray took care of me back in the day. And um, for me, so I wrestled Dom last Friday night on Raw. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. For sure. But uh, I was, it was such a pleasure to be out there with him and, and to uh, just to get to be out there knowing like, oh my God, I know your dad's at home watching. Like yeah. I wanna make your dad proud. Yeah. You know, like uh, it, it, was, it was a great feeling. I am so proud of Dom as well. And I know exactly what you're talking about. When he first started coming up and Ray brought him around, it's like, oh. What do we do? This kid needs another uh, fucking 10 years. And, and you know, he needs to go <laughs> fight in a war or something and come back grizzled. <laughs> like, like, like there was something about him. Well, he did get the tattoos. He, he, the tattoos helped. And don't forget the mullet. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> but but like, it's just, he's he's got it now. But it happened so quick. It did. It, happens, it happened really quick for it him. Did. I think yeah. the feud with his dad. Oh, well, well that, that, that was it. That right? set it off. And I remember that night and I texted Ray and Dom that night. I, I want to say he either uh, clotheslined his father or kicked his dad in the mm. nuts. But <laughs> Ray is such a lovable guy. And for him to, you know, and, and we all grew up 20 years ago, fans saw Dominic on television. He was involved in storylines. Yeah. So everyone saw this, this cute thing. little yeah. kid, man. And now here he is and he's disrespecting his father, whom we adore. Yeah, boo. Still, you know still, I mean? still, still to this day, after I took the U.S. title off of Rey Mysterio, which I did in in Saudi Arabia, U.S. champ, it's U.S. Yeah. champ right there. Uh, uh, I I said to Don backstage, I was I was like, your, your dad's a legend, man. He goes, yeah, fuck that guy. I'm like, <laughs> uh, isn't but isn't him finding his like zone similarly to you just a testament of like having to try shit in life. Like you tried, this is for the audience watches, even the, the people that aren't for some reason, WWE fans, you, you had this confidence issue. Maybe Dom had this confidence issue. You know, you tried basketball, you tried, you know, working the night shift at the gas station. And then you found your thing. Cause you tried it. Cause you went against everything that your lack of confidence told you inside your no disrespect massive fucking head right which was which was i'm too scared or i'm not good enough or i don't have the ability to do this and you did it anyways right and that first step led you to getting a little bit of experience a little bit of credibility which then led you to getting that confidence you know which is which is such a beautiful ladder and storyline for for life and and can you only imagine if you hadn't taking that first step and how important that is to your journey yeah no i it's it's all about taking that first leap doing something that that you're scared to do and i try to you know teach my kids especially my older sons that like you gotta do what's uncomfortable sometimes you know like it, it, you have to make yourself uncomfortable and when your body's in that state when your mind's in that state that's when you grow that's when you learn that's when you become resilient you know you know who likes going to the gym? You know, if you enjoy going to the gym, 
you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> you're probably going to the gym. That just hit, well, that just well, hit me hard. Said, you're bro, probably going hurt. to the gym when everyone gets off work and the girls are in there and you're like, yeah, hey, you know. But if you're in the dungeon and you're by yourself and you're sweating with your homie and you guys are pushing through it and you're working and, and you're not in there three hours, but you're in there an hour and a half, but you're going balls to the wall. I'm sure like with the boxing training, like you know the difference between training and training. Dude, I don't like training. I've always been vocal about that. It, it, it really sucks. It's hard. It's but hard. the payoff, that separates the men from the boys. Mm, mm. That, that's, that's where you find out who's who. And I've found extreme pleasure in that. That's the that's the motivating factor for of me. Of course. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm in there. I don't, I don't want to be in there, but that jumping that hurdle will pay off in in substantial ways in the future and i know that and it keeps me going yeah hell yeah um how did you develop the rko so did you ever meet john laurinaitis so he was head of talent relations um when for the majority of my career he used to do a move called the ace crusher very very similar to the rko diamond dallas page who i'm sure you're familiar with he did uh the diamond cutter um, both those moves inspired me and in one way or another for me to come up with with the RKO. And, and essentially what it was is I blew my shoulders out early in my career. I've had three shoulder operations. Um, so I, if you, you can go back and very rarely will you ever see me pick a guy up. Like if you look in the last 10 years, other than like a Rey Mysterio or a Dom, I don't pick guys up. I don't do power moves. I don't. It's like a mobility thing. Uh, yeah, it's just me because I don't need to do it. Okay. It, I, so I could pick up a guy and slam him. My shoulders are healthy and fine, but when I blew him out early on in my head, I got it to where okay, I got to protect my shoulders. So I go way overboard in protecting my shoulders because you know I don't want to be on the shelf with another shoulder injury, mm. but I know that I don't need to do it. Um, and uh, I think. Shit, I forget where I was going there. But. <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page, shoulders, oh, you don't yeah, pick guys yes, up. Yes. How you develop that. <laughs> so I needed a move that I could do to everybody. That didn't inv that I could do, you know, Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, or Omos, or it, yep. you, know, yep. we're, you guys we're, are all tangled. We're up. like, uh, what is it? Um, crossing swords. Crossing swords. Sorry, that's all right. No biggie. No, he didn't want to say it. you can say it. Uh, yeah. He's just the host, so he just likes to keep it, you know, kosher. Cross swords all day with you, Logan. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. Randy. Yeah, yeah. Are we on? Is this live? Um, this is live. But yeah, you know, I, I wanted to be able to do that, you know, finishing move to everybody. Yeah. And 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 that was the best choice. Dude, it's so good. When I was running around my amateur high school um, wrestling room. Right. The kids before practice sure. are running around RKOing the shit out of each other. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I knew what the RKO was before I knew about you. <laughs> like, right. like, like the, right. mo the move right. in many right. ways, like, has e had this, this life of its own. Yeah. And to have a finisher that significant has got to feel awesome. Like, it, I, it really does. I, it's, it's, it's hard to come up with something that significant to work backwards and be like, I want to, I want to, do something this special, but what does it look like? And like, I'm yeah. in that developmental. I feel like what's really cool about this place is you, it, it's, you can't really do that. You can't work backwards with something like that. You, you can sure as hell try mm. and you can maybe get lucky, but a lot of the things that happen in our business that like catch fire with the fans, I feel like it's organic. Super. Yeah. Yeah, it's what, like, I, it's what I, I found. I was just looking for a move that I could do to everybody. In my head, did I go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tailor make this move to be the biggest thing, the biggest move in the WWE. And no, I was just like, man, what can I do where I ain't going to hurt myself? And I apply it to everybody. Anybody. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and a, it's a simple, like, it is. It relatively, is. once again, no disrespect. It, it's a cutter. No, hell Co no. It, comparatively, yeah. I, I grew up watching, like, Ahmed Johnson. The Pearl, Pearl River Plunge is, like, a freaking insane, like, right. lifting over the back of the head, dropping right. move. Yeah. And it, like, you know, it, it's, if, oddly enough, a lot of the biggest finishers, like the Tombstone, 
are, are relatively like simple, I just think explosive. That's, I think that's part awesome. of it. It's yeah, because so, yeah, like you can yes, I was just gonna say that on the pillows. That's, that's very yeah. true. It's it's you know that if, if you got a pool in the backyard, all the kids can do it in the pool, mm -hmm. the trampoline, mm -hmm. under off the couch, under the you know the, the cushions on the floor. I think that's a very good point. It's the honestly, only that might be my starting point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, how can people recreate? Make it this? simple. Right. Right. I think it's the only trending TikTok sound. That a, a WWE finish. I what had a look out, look out, look out. I had <laughs> one of my most viral vines. Yeah. yeah. The soundtrack was it. Look out, it's Randy Orton slithering in. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, watch and I out, did it yeah. to my friend. I did it to my friend Marcus Johns into a pool. One of my most viewed vines of all time. That's that's really cool to <laughs> yeah. know. And you know, so so that's another thing. It wasn't all just me. Like you said, you knew about the RKO before you knew who I was, and that it was essentially my initials. Um the uh the memes that took took on i mean like 10 years ago i feel like somebody out there whoever it is thank you so much <laughs> but uh somebody started doing those things and and, and memes and they started making them just elon. Pop, popping up popping up what'd you say elon, elon. Was well, it was elon, elon. Yeah. <laughs> thank you elon um building rockets let me make this meme um, <laughs> yeah yeah but but like it just you know I said earlier I was blessed, you know, to get, you know, born into this, get the opportunity <laughs> through my father, you know, same with with the memes. Like just that bolstered, boosted up my 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 character and made me more important, made my value, you know, my brand more important. Like a lot of people do a cutter, but um, you know, when I hit mine, it's like, oh, that's that's the cutter. It's one of the things that I think also differentiates you from other superstars is like you you have infiltrated culture in a really like internet specific way. Sure, that, sure. That works. Even even just your last performance at, at War Games. Right. Like, dude, it's all I'm seeing is just Randy Orton stuff. Randy Orton's return. Right. Even though God, 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 God. Like, yeah. As soon as I saw, it, I was like, "This is a, he's back in another moment." <laughs> What's funny about the what you're talking about the guy, guy, guy? guy. <laughs> uh, as soon as that dropped, like I think my wife sent it to me, and then one of my sons sent it to me, and then I'm sending it to my mom, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and my mom's laughing and sent <laughs> yeah. it to my aunt. So I know exactly what you're yeah, talking. Yeah, it's it's about. It's, it, it's so organic and easy to send. I'm gonna do it, Randy. Yeah, I'm gonna do it, guy, 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 guy. Yeah, guy. yeah, do it, do it, baby. You're up. Uh, your RKOs, just just want to uh, put a button on this. Some yeah. of them are incredible. You did one at War Games um, against the bobblehead guy. Um, oh yeah, JD. Yeah, JD. Sorry, bro. No, he uh, he, he knows. <laughs> I, I just met him Saturday in Chicago, and he 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 was he was very well aware that he had a large head. Yeah, yeah, he knew. He knew. <laughs> it's it's a, you know we some people are just built like that anyway. Right, right. Uh, uh, and then the one He's built up, built different, <laughs> built different, built different, brother. You're built different. <laughs> yeah. The one. Uh, uh, Seth Rollins. That was oh, yeah. that was one that was one of the coolest ones. It's yeah. gotta be one of your favorites. Yeah. Uh, or he, he steps on your back. It's it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. And and I can't so when it comes to the timing, I'll take the credit on that. But but when it comes to getting there, um I gotta give all that credit to Seth. You know, um, you know, I, I gave him a, a base to jump off of, but but he had to run towards me, redirect, go straight up off the back and Give me and give me enough hang time. Give himself enough hang time, I should say, for me to go from being bent way the fuck over to getting out from underneath, seeing him and dropping. And if he would have been just a little off, the whole move would have not went down. Uh, or if it went down, it wouldn't have been pretty, you know. And it would have been on me, you know. I would have took the the criticism on that. So so I got to give guys like Seth. And all the other guys that have done the springboards in where I catch them, and even JD, Bobblehead JD. It was, it was great. It yeah. Was, no, it's, I watch his, I watch that move a lot um, with JD. And sure. even just the way he just flat stomach bumped is, is insane from, you, the, from the top of the cage. Right. Yeah. I, I, I've never been able to, never will be able to do that. For sure. Does anybody ever ask you to RKO him in public places? Like, if oh, you, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, 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 all the time. Oh, he, oh he, boy. He said, uh, he, while we were walking up here, he's like, "I want Randy to RKO me." <laughs> we should. I mean, do these cushions come off? <laughs> <laughs> we could make a little area in the corner over there. <laughs> like at bars, if you're, uh, you probably don't go to bars very much. No, you're a, fa a family man. Yeah. But uh, you know, Whole Foods, for example. Oh yeah. In I, the granola I, aisle, does anyone all ever? All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I, so like my my uh, oldest daughter Alana, she's uh, plays varsity volleyball, 
And um, because I was, it was on the tail end of my recovery, I was able to go and watch a lot of her games um, this season. And I mean, we're at high schools, a lot of the high school kids will go and, you know, I was taking pictures and signing autographs for the high school kids and, and they were great, right? Very respectful. Um, always, you know, every five minutes, you know, hey man, RKO me because they want to. And then all their friends are. Oh God, like they they, they want to get yeah. As a matter of fact, like in between uh, volleyball sets, a big huddle of high school kids went down on the court, and I, I kind of I saw it in my peripheral. I didn't know what was going on, and I kind of just at the last second I caught it. But one kid RKO'd the other kid on the court, and then ESPN like so so the uh, the uh, high school like journalists kid was taking the video right he posted it asked my permission but like espn picked it up sports center picked it up because when he's filming his friends do the rko then they zoom in on me oh that's cool yeah and, I, and i'm kind of like you know picking my nose and like, <laughs> you know and I, I just give a thumbs up and it's like you know the voice in the background when you rko your friend in front of randy orton you know yeah 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 nice. and 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 um you know so so yes you know i get i get asked a lot social media even right there you just kind of evidenced it has helped your career a lot. What are your thoughts on on social media from a more holistic standpoint? Do the kids all have uh, Instagram accounts? What age did they get them at? Okay, so so on and so forth. Yeah, um, talk about my kids, of course. Um, so my my oldest is twenty one. Yep. So so he's doing his thing. He actually graduates from uh, New York Film Academy in uh, a week, two Gorgeous. weeks. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, congrats. Um, so yeah, he's right down the street as cool. we speak. Um, but uh, yeah. My younger kids, no, no. My, like, you know, my, my, my six-year-old, uh, she just turned seven. Her name's Brooklyn. Um, she's got her iPad, you know, and I got, I hate admitting this uh, on air, but like, it's a hell of a tool when you need to get something done. I've been and, vocal. And and it's like, hey, here's the iPad. Yeah. And then, you know, here's hey, the iPad. And yeah. then here's the iPad. Next thing you know, it's like, hey, give me the iPad. And she turns into the devil. <laughs> And that's like, oh, what have I done? I'm a bad parent. But but I think it's just a, a crutch that us parents kind of find ourselves needing. You what know, was the TV? Nowadays. It was Sesame Street at one point. It, yeah. There's always been a tool. Well, Don't beat yourself well, up too bad. Yeah, and and I won't, trust me. I, <laughs> well, you but, would, if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to feel any of those punches. I'd be, I'd be, they'd be so good, man. Um, but but uh, but yeah, yeah. I was, at a, I was at a dinner the other night, and uh, there were kids playing with real toys at the table like multiple and I, and I thought wow that's crazy I, recently I've just been seeing parents hand their kids like an iPad or something and I actually don't think there's anything wrong with that especially because like the way technology is evolving if you can have a technologically savvy young adult especially because kids are getting smarter faster yeah, I have, agree. You, have you noticed that phenomenon? 100 percent and I I think like with with the uh the YouTube and the um the the social media and stuff it's like an attention span thing mm. but I I I feel like you know they they, they want that uh reward quickly you know it yeah, feels like yeah. um and then you know swipe reward swipe, well that's reward. that's a problem because Th that's the problem but as far as what you're talking about um you know, I, I can tell that she kind of gets it, you know, when she was very young, the fact that she could go into the settings and change this and that was impressive, it's impressive. to me, you know, and I feel like, you know, f finger dexterity and things like that. And, and, um, I play video games myself, uh, right now. Yeah. What, brother. What do you play? Call Duty, <laughs> what do you play? Uh, so that call of duty drop, I'm playing the zombies. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. The new go. zombies, is the war zone zombies yeah, or whatever, go. but I'm, I'm also like 50 hours deep into Starfield. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's it's cool. I you know what my wife's amazing. She gives me that you know that good hour a night. Dude, I was gonna say, how does the wife feel about? She's it? She's cool. She don't mind. Oh yeah, she don't mind. She, she she'll definitely sit. tells you to get off it at some point. She'll, well, so here's the thing. I'll hand her the iPad, and then she'll start buying. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. And then and then she'll start going through Amazon buying shit, and she's happy. So yeah. on your credit cards, of course. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> but I was gonna say for you or or for your wife with the iPad, it's a little bit different because you talked about kids like learning faster nowadays. The 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 downside and the detriment is there's a, a massive study just came out recently from from the workforce that these these employers are looking at these these youthful employees coming in. They don't know how to make eye contact. 
They don't know any of the general rules of, of, of in-person conversation. They've, they were born looking at screens. They look at screens on Zoom all day. They learn through screens and they don't have the general functionality that is needed for day-to-day -day conversation. And, yeah. and so well, kids are learning faster nowadays, they're also unlearning some very, very I, important- I would agree. Tactical yeah. life skills. Yeah, and I see it too. I, I see it too. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of scary, but it's also like we're evolving and things are changing. And like, look, I don't want to sit here like when I was a kid, you know, I'd go outside and I'd, you know, like shit. But how much of that is, but how much changes. of that is needed? How much, like, trust me, I'm, I'm as far as advancements go, I'm a, a relatively liberal person in terms sure. of the world changes, people changes, like sure. catch up or get left behind. But sure. like, how much do we have to defend some rightful need to go outside? Well, you know, like- And, do, then, and then the pandemic really screwed all those kids up. Like my daughter was, was, God, was she two or three? God, we had to go some, we went to Disney World and I'm thinking like, you know, I'll do this VIP gimmick and we'll get taken care of like man we were in masks couldn't take them down to take pictures and this the fact that she couldn't even go there and she had to cover up and you know just like being in school she went to a Montessori school and um you know up until she was uh four and you know not being able to see the teachers faces and not being able to be as social and, and really depersonalized yeah and, and I'm talking pandemic but then like you add during the pandemic you know all these these devices in their hands and then they're just mask uh, on head oh. down pan you know going on ipad crazy like it's it, it is a little scary i think i think the the whole social uh you know just being socially awkward you know that's anxiety yeah it's just yeah. it's a really big it's it's funny there's that uh show at the, or doc called the social experiment that's what it is. We are living in it. We are the social experiment. Of course. I mean, this is the testing grounds for a whole new way of life and a whole new, you know, evolution of our species where we are now part man, part machine. Right. And I think the only thing you really can do is try to have some sort of uh, um, oversight on what they're looking at. Like if, if you're if you're 14 year old kid or 12 year old kid is spending time on X formerly known as Twitter, right. they are watching video after video of school shootings, of, 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 of beat downs in schools, knifings, terrible, terrible stuff. I mean, at that age, I was watching Doug Funny and Rugrats yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever, you know, whatever was the next at, at 12 or 14, I, you know, probably something else. But I guess you really have to kind of monitor what's on that screen. Yeah, like, like you said, oversight, like, like who's deciding what's okay. Well, well I, I think it, it, it's the parents, you know. Like, Has to be. Well, when it comes to the kids and you just have to be vigilant and know what they're they're watching you know like gosh you know I, I remember when i was a kid when i was you know probably 12 13 you know i used to go get my hair cut at my my grandpa's barber you know and he'd take me every couple of weeks and i'd get my hair cut and there was a couple of playboys mm. oh, for oh, sure yeah, 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 yeah. Rip, rip a page <laughs> out fold it up tuck it <laughs> You know, and I think over the course of, of uh, the few years, I had a, a half a dozen Playboy centerfolds. You and know, you got in to my see possession. a couple. You got to see a couple boobs. And I got yeah. to see some boobs. But, but like, look at what the access is now. Like, even in, in that same note, it's like I would go to the video store, and sneak into the back section. They'd have this this section called Faces of Death. Right. And oh, it was I remember this Faces ultra of Death. Gore, yeah. Yeah. You know, section where you could potentially see someone get yeah. a, a limb severed, but you'd yeah. have to you'd have to sneak it hiding like this and that. Right. Now you just open the most popular social media engine on the planet and you're looking at there's women in the room but you're looking at much deeper yeah. than playboy yeah. type things deeper good yeah, word. Yeah, yeah deeper than playboy and you're yeah. looking at yeah. you know all kinds of stuff so yeah, yeah. I, I think oversight is really the important thing but you now you're a good parent oh yeah you're you're now a role model <laughs> well I'll, I'll you're a role model you're you know a, a, a an icon in the sport but were you always? No, no. I want to. I want to ask you some vulnerable questions. Do you? Do you think, at some point in your career, you were a dick? Yes. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. I. Uh, One hundred percent. But but that was like. <clears throat> excuse me. That was like my armor. I was. I was a asshole. I think because I wanted people to to respect me. Maybe I like. I'm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that I grew out of that phase and I thank God that I did. But I, I see like footage, you know, that um, I didn't know the camera was rolling maybe at that autograph signing and there's an interaction with a fan and, and it's picked up. And then now they're doing this doc on A&E 
that they just kind of are, are finishing up. And I've seen some of this footage from 10, 15 years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, like that's horrible, you know? Um, but like, that's, that's just kind of who I was. I, 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 it wasn't coming from a place of confidence. I think it was coming from a place of, of like, it was my armor, man, like that I was an asshole and, and maybe I would get respect that way. Maybe it was a little bit of fear and I took it as respect and either way I was fine with it, you know, but luckily I was given a second, third, fourth chance, you know, um, from Vince McMahon coming up when I would get in trouble or I would have to, you know, get sent away for a couple months or I would have to get fined a second or third time. and. I just blessed, like I am so blessed. I just had the right guys in there to kind of, you know, yank my ass straight and make sure that I was walking a straight line with the times that I did veer off. Triple you know? H was one of those? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, 100%. He was, he was that rock, it seemed like, for Shawn Michaels as well. Yes. So it's it's crazy, it's, he just seems like a, just a stellar human as, he as is. a friend and now a boss. He like, is. Like He's very smart, but but um, you know, with the business, business smart. Mm -hmm. Like if you have any questions with wrestling, you go to him. Yeah. And then you're gonna get a good answer. Um, or at least it's gonna, you know, spark, you know, something of your own to come out of the woodwork. But but as far as like a, a human being, like I went to his wedding. I, I've kind of seen him evolve and he has three girls and uh his his oldest girl is just a few years older than mine. Um, so we have that in common and, and, but I think recently for him, because he had the health scare and everything, I think he realizes how important time, family time is. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that has changed. I think, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, you were missing birthdays, you were missing anniversaries, you were missing holidays, you know, and there was no either way about it. Like mm -hmm. you were going to miss, you wouldn't even ask for off now there's leniency there. Mm. Now he'll make sure that you can get home for the birth of your baby, or he'll make sure that you can get home for that birthday because he understands now how important that is. And I think company wide that that's been a change for the better. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's 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 a great leader, man. He, he, he does. He doesn't. He is the boss, but he doesn't feel like a boss. Does not feel you like know? a boss. He feels well, like a well, collaborator. Well, so so he was he was uh, one of the boys. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when I was introduced to him, you know, when I was 20, he was one of the boys. And, and to me, he'll always be more so one of the boys than purely office. And I think that's because I know that I can trust him and that he's going to steer me in the right way. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's usually, you know, you got your clique of guys that, you know, have your back. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's one of those guys for me. Um, I know you have a time limit. The last thing I want to ask before we get you out of here for uh, SmackDown tonight is sure. uh, I, I, know, I know you're big with the uh, the troops. I know you uh, are a massive troop supporter. You spend a lot of time um, there. Is that is that because of the time you spent in the military? Is it just respect you have for, for people defending our country? It has nothing to do with the time that I spent in the military. Um, but being involved with uh, the tribute to the troop shows and the things that we've done and meeting our troops, especially when we flew over to the Middle East, like... I was 25, 26, 27, and we were flying over there like like we were in the middle of it. It was pretty intense, but Vince was right there with us. And, uh, you know, we like slept in, in, in one of Saddam's son's palaces, you know, that they had taken over, conquered, emptied out, and turned into a forward operating base. And now we're like sleeping in this giant room with like gold trim on the ceilings and 40 foot, you know, Whoa. entryways, Whoa. like like just going over there and seeing that and seeing like, you know, how hard those people had it and how, you know, our guys were over there helping out and putting their life on the line to do so. Like any, Anybody out there that's putting their life on the line for other people, like how could you not have just the utmost respect for them? So, so yeah. So whenever I get an opportunity to do something um, with the military or for the military, more than happy. But my passion more so lies in the kids and meeting the, the Make-A-Wish kids and mm -hmm. um, just knowing how how much of an effect I have on meeting just just a just a regular ten year old in the street that might recognize me if I give him eight, eight seconds of my time and make eye contact, shake his hand, ask his name. What's your name? Wait, wait, wait what was it with a a, a B or a, a, okay, cool, yeah. nice to meet you, man. They won't forget that changes their life. It does. And, eight seconds and, of your time, and I can their life. I can see it on their face, yeah. and it just it warms my heart. And you know, I'm getting a little soft, and I got the kids at home, and I, I understand 
like how important that is for them and, and for their parents and just like so i i love the the make-a-wish kids and the kids in general and it's how we touch them very admirable and i think important that a person in your position recognizes that they have that kind of impact on people sure because it, it's 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 relatively effortless right it you, is you literally you give eight seconds you give it, eight seconds it is and, I, and, I, and, and where i changed i think a lot from the asshole i used to be is i didn't used to recognize that power that mm. i had you mm. know and um now i do mm. you know and it, it's it is a good thing that's all that matters yeah man Randy Orton, it's been a goddamn pleasure. We we could go for three hours, man. And I I'd love to just continue the conversation backstage and just keep chopping it up, man. For sure. Maybe we get a match in there one day. It'd I think a, so, man. It'd be an honor. If if you want this belt, yo, good luck. You ain't gonna get it, but <laughs> <laughs> you can you can have. He's it. got fourteen of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got way more. I got some catching up to do, but uh, uh, it's been an honor, dude. Um, I'll see you tonight at SmackDown, ladies and gentlemen. Randy freaking Orton. Thanks, guys. Of course, man. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it, bro. Right, this cool. this this was fantastic. Yeah, I thought it went well. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, Do you remember course, doing the podcast where you sign out of the show and tell them to like and subscribe? You guys want to like and subscribe? <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>